Hi, welcome to today's topic. Today, we will be looking at trends in group 2 metals. The objective will be to explain trends in group 2 metals. Let us begin. Trends in group 2 metals are the ease of ionization, reaction with oxygen, reactions with water, and reaction with dilute acids. We will be looking at hydrochloric acid as well as sulfuric acid. Let's start by looking at the ease of ionization. What is ionization? Well, ionization is the energy required to remove one or more electrons from gaseous atoms to form gaseous ions. Just a very simple definition for this level. Now, as you go down a group, ionization energy decreases. Let us see why. Let's look at this atom having two shells. Now, this is the nucleus, and the nucleus contains protons and neutrons. Remember that protons are positively charged. Now, my first shell, I have electrons here, and on my second shell, I have an electron here. Now, the electron on my second shell, or my valence shell, is the farthest away from the nucleus. The electrons on the first shell, they are very close to the nucleus. Now, if I want to remove these electrons, I must supply energy. Now, the energy supplied will be used to try and pull away the electrons from the force it is being felt coming from the nucleus. The closer the electrons are to the nucleus, the stronger the force of attraction. So these electrons are very difficult to remove. So they would require a large amount of ionization energy. The farther away the electrons are from the nucleus, the less force of attraction being felt by the electrons. Hence, the energy coming in to remove this electron from the atom will be easier or less than to remove the electrons closer to the nucleus. So this electron here on the valence shell, being farther away from the nucleus, would require a lower or a smaller amount of ionization energy. The closer you are, you require a larger amount of ionization energy. Let's see how that links to group 2 elements. For example, magnesium and calcium. Now, magnesium has an atomic number of 12 which gives it a configuration of 2A2. Calcium, its atomic number is 20, and its configuration is 2882. Now, as you go down the group, you will notice that the number of shells increase. Now, if the number of shells increases, the valence electron is going farther away from the nucleus. So, magnesium, these valence electrons are closer to the nucleus than these valence electrons here in calcium. So, the distance here is shorter than the distance here. The valence electrons on magnesium being closer to the nucleus are being held more tightly. So, I would require a larger amount of kinetic energy to remove these electrons. The electrons here in calcium, they are farther from the nucleus. Hence, the force being felt is less than the force being felt here in magnesium. This simply means that the farther you are from the nucleus, the weaker the forces of attraction, and therefore the easier it is for the valence electrons to be removed. So therefore, calcium would require a smaller amount of ionization energy to remove the electrons, than in magnesium, which would require a larger amount of ionization energy. Hence, calcium is more reactive than magnesium. Remember we said in previous lessons that reactions in inorganic chemistry is dependent on the valence electrons. In this case, the valence electrons, if they are lost very easily, then they are more reactive than an atom where the valence electrons are not lost so easily easily. A point to note, if you look at magnesium, you will see that we have three electron shells. Hence, having three electron shells, magnesium would belong to period three.
So the number of shells tells the period. And the valence electrons tells the group. So magnesium belongs to group 2 and period 3. So we can pinpoint the exact position to which magnesium is placed in the periodic table. Calcium having 4 shells would belong to period 4. Its valence electrons, 2 on the outer shell, therefore it belongs to group 2. So again, if we know the number of shells, we know the period. And if we know the number of electrons on the valence shell, we know the group. So, ionization energy, distance, and forces of attraction. We will use these three items to discuss and explain the reactivity of group two elements. We will do so with oxygen, water, as well as dilute acids. Now, the elements in group two increases in reactivity down the group. Now remember, we said that reactivity increases down the group for group two elements because atomic radius increases. That is, the atom becomes larger. Now, if the atomic radius increases, then the force of attraction between the nucleus and the valence electrons, they are weaker. And this means that the valence electrons will be lost more easily. So reactivity increases down the group based on these three main factors. Let's examine reactions with oxygen. Now when you react metals with oxygen, you simply burn them in air and observe what will happen. Now the reactions of group 2 metals with oxygen is that a metal will react with oxygen to produce a metal oxide. Now, here are some equations that explains the reaction of group 2 metals with oxygen. Magnesium plus oxygen will give you magnesium oxide. Calcium plus oxygen will produce calcium oxide. So, group 2 metals burn in oxygen to produce the metal oxides. Remember that these compounds that is formed in the product that they are ionic. Now, if they are ionic, we can write the formula from their original charges. And we must ensure that in order so that we can balance the equations, that the product, they are electrically neutral. So, magnesium would have a 2 plus charge. Oxygen would have a 2 minus charge. And for this to be electrically neutral, the number of 2 plus ions for magnesium must cancel the 2 minus charge for oxygen. So we will ensure that by bringing the 2 there, bringing 2 there, and writing the empirical formula, which is MgO. Now this is electrically neutral. Same thing would apply for calcium. Now if we have the correct product, our balancing will be correct. So in terms of mass balance, I have two magnesium here, two magnesium there. Two oxygen, two oxygen. And you'll notice that you must always ensure to write in your state symbols. Solids for magnesium, G for gas for oxygen, and solid for magnesium oxide. Again, the same thing applies for calcium. Remember that you can use the trends in the group 2 metals to answer various questions. For instance, suppose we find a metal X. And X behaves like a metal in group 2. So X would have a 2 plus charge if it behaves like a group 2 metal. Now, the reaction with X and oxygen will be very similar to the reactions of magnesium and calcium. So we will produce X oxide as a solid. And again, we'll just simply balance the equation. Two there, two there for X. So two X, two X out there. Two oxygen, two oxygen. And then we will put in our state symbols. So X being a metal will be a solid. Oxygen being a gas 
will be G. And of course, the metal oxide is also a solid with a state symbol S. Let's move on to reactions with water. Now, magnesium is above calcium in group 2. So, what will happen if I react magnesium with water and compare that with the reaction between calcium and water? Well, because magnesium is above calcium in group 2, magnesium will not be as reactive as the calcium metal. So, we will say that magnesium being higher in group 2 reacts very slowly with cold water. And when we say cold water, we mean at room temperature. Now, magnesium does react with water, but the reaction is so slow that most times at this level, we just simply say that there is no reaction. But just bear in mind that there is a reaction. It is just very, very slow. Now we say, if I now react magnesium with steam, now I will get a reaction because steam is in the gaseous form of water. So we have more particles in the gaseous state. Increasing surface area will cause a faster reaction. So looking at these equations here, we will see that magnesium metal will not react with cold water or reacts very slowly. So no visible reaction or no observable change. Whereas if you react the magnesium with steam, notice the state symbols are different. Steam is gas, water is liquid. Now we would form magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. This gas we can test for using a lit splint. And if we put the lit splint in the gas, it should go out with a pop. Now, if you react magnesium with excess steam, now we will get a different product. If it is excess, we will produce magnesium hydroxide plus H2. But this will only happen if excess steam is used to react with our magnesium metal. Now, calcium is below magnesium. Of course, if calcium is below magnesium, the atomic radius of calcium is bigger than that of magnesium. Hence, calcium is more reactive. So calcium will react with cold water easily. And this will react to produce calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Remember to check the formula of the product form. Because if you write the wrong formula, then balancing is going to be a challenge. So what do we do again? We write calcium with a 2 plus charge, hydroxide with a minus 1 charge. Now this minus 1, it governs both the oxygen and the hydrogen. So this will not be only for the H, but for both the O and the H. So we call it a radical. So we will bring 2 here and we'll bring 1 there and we will write calcium. 1, OH, bracket 2. But we can ignore the 1. And so we'll write calcium hydroxide. And so if we know that this is the correct formula, we know that we have 2 oxygen, which will balance with these 2 oxygen here, 2 hydrogen here, and 2 here makes it 4. Therefore, 2 times 2 makes it 4 hydrogen here. One calcium will balance with one calcium. So our mass balance is okay. Let's now look at the reactions of group 2 metals with dilute acids. By now, we realize that calcium is more reactive than magnesium. So let's look at what will happen here. Now we're not using water, we're using acid. Now, both magnesium and calcium will react with our dilute acids. And whenever you react a metal or a fairly reactive metal with a dilute acid, you produce a metal salt plus hydrogen gas. In this case, we are using magnesium and hydrochloric acid. So we produce a salt, magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. 
But suppose the acid was sulfuric acid, then we will produce magnesium sulfate plus hydrogen gas. So it depends on the acid that you're using that will determine the type of salt produced. Now here is your equation. Magnesium plus HCl produces magnesium chloride plus H2 gas. Again, Mg comes with a 2 plus charge and Cl with a minus charge. And so we must ensure that this particular formula is electrically neutral. So we write MgCl2, which is saying basically that I have one Mg atom with a 2 plus charge to balance out two Cl minus ions. And so you see these two minus ions here balance out this 2 plus charge, which makes this particular formula electrically neutral. Now, calcium will also react with HCl, but a bit more vigorous since it is more reactive than magnesium. Again, we'll produce salt and hydrogen gas. Bear in mind that trends in group 2 metals are very similar to trends in group 1. So the same type of reactions we would observe in group 2, we would observe the same type of reactions in group 1. The only difference is group 1 metals are more reactive than group 2 metals and so those reactions might be more vigorous or even a bit violent. So just bear that in mind and this concludes our lesson on group 2 metals. Next time we meet, we will discuss group 7 nonmetals and their trends. See you then.